Hi, this is Eric the Parts Actor, and today we're going to show you how to replace the circulation pump inlet grommet on your Whirlpool dishwasher. These instructions also apply to other Whirlpool dishwasher brands, including KitchenAid, Magtake, Jenner, Amana, and more. The inlet grommet ensures a proper seal between the circulation pump and the sump. If it is damaged or not sealing, it may cause water to leak from the circulation pump area of the dishwasher. Note in order to remove the circulation pump motor, you'll need to break the Odricker clamp holding the hose assembly in place, which means you'll need a replacement Odricker clamp to complete this repair. We'll leave a link in the description below to where we get ours. If you need a new inlet grommet for your Whirlpool dishwasher, you can check our website, partsactor.com, where we sell parts for all major appliance brands. In order to complete this repair, you'll need an Odricker ear crimper. We'll leave a link in the description below to where we got ours. For this repair, we'll need to remove the dishwasher from beneath the countertop. First, disconnect the power to the dishwasher. If your dishwasher has a power cord, unplug the dishwasher. If your dishwasher is hardwired, you'll need to turn off the power at the breaker before disconnecting the wires in the terminal box, which is located underneath the dishwasher. Next, disconnect the drain hose from the sink, plumbing, or garbage disposal. Then, feed the drain tube and power cord through the holes in your cabinet as far as they'll go. Next, turn off the water shutoff valve for the water supply line. Then, remove the access panel on the bottom of the dishwasher by undoing the retainers. Place a towel or sheet pan under the dishwasher to catch any water that may leak. Now, disconnect the water supply line from underneath the dishwasher. Leave the drain tube attached. Next, open the dishwasher door and remove the screw securing the dishwasher to the countertop. If your dishwasher is side mounted, remove the screws from the cabinet, which may be located behind the cabinet seal or behind the plastic cap on the side of the dishwasher. You may need to lower the dishwasher's leveling legs if it is too tight against the countertop. Now, slide the dishwasher out from underneath the countertop, being sure to feed both the power cable and drain tube through the holes in the cabinet. Start by taping the dishwasher door shut. Then, carefully flip the dishwasher upside down on a soft surface to avoid scratching or damaging. The circulation pump motor is located here, behind the sump damper. Using a 5 16 inch nut driver, remove the two screws holding the sump damper in place. Then, lift it up and away to remove it. In order to gain access to the hose clamp holding the circulation pump to the hose assembly, we'll first need to remove the diverter motor. Using a T15 Torx bit, remove the two screws holding the motor in place. Then, depressing the locking tabs, lift the motor out and set it aside, being careful as it is still connected by wires. Now, disconnect the electrical connector on the circulation pump by depressing the locking tabs using a flat-headed screwdriver. Then, remove the wire from the retainer on the pump. Next, using an Odeker crimper, pinch the clamp and break it away from the hose. Then, pull the hose assembly away from the sump assembly. You may need to use a flathead screwdriver to help pry the hose away from the inlet. Now, carefully pull the circulation pump away from the sump. Use a flathead screwdriver to help remove the inlet grommet. Then, remove the grommet from the old circulation pump. If you need to purchase a new inlet grommet, you can check out our website, partsactor.com. We'll leave a link in the description below. You want to make sure you are searching with the model number from the tag on your dishwasher to make sure you are getting the correct part. To install, align the new inlet grommet to the circulation pump and press into place. Before installing the circulation motor, ensure that the isolator is firmly seated in the sump. Now, insert the pump hanger into the isolator while aligning the inlet grommet to the sump port. Press the inlet grommet firmly into place to ensure a proper seal. Then, slide the new hose into the sump, being sure that the tab on the hose sits in this groove. Using the Odeker pliers, crimp the clamp to secure the hose in place. The Odeker clamp will bend into a loop shape when tightened and cannot be reused once it is crimped. Then, route the wire through the retainer and reconnect the electrical connector. Now, reinsert the diverter motor actuator shaft into the sump while aligning the screw holes. Then, reinstall the screws. Next, realign the sump damper to the sump and reinstall the two screws. Now, let's flip the dishwasher over and get it reinstalled. To reinstall, begin by laying the water line on the floor so that it is in line with the inlet valve. 
Then tape it down so it remains in place when sliding the dishwasher. With the dishwasher near the cabinet, feed the drain tube through the hole located towards the top of the cabinet and feed the power cord through the lower hole. Now push the dishwasher back a few inches underneath the countertop and continue feeding the drain tube and power cord into the cabinet. Repeat until the dishwasher is in place. With the dishwasher door open, align the holes in the mounting brackets with the pre-existing screw holes under the countertop or with the screw holes in the cabinet if using side mounting brackets. You may need to extend the dishwasher's leveling legs to ensure a tight fit against the countertop. Then reinstall the two mounting bracket screws. Now reconnect the water line to the water inlet valve located on the bottom of the dishwasher. Then reinstall the access panel by aligning and inserting the retainers and securing in place. Reconnect the drain tube to the sink plumbing or garbage disposal. Now plug in your dishwasher. If your dishwasher is hardwired, you'll need to reconnect wires in the terminal box and restore power by flipping the breaker. Then turn on the water valve. Finally, test the dishwasher and check for any leaks. And that's it for today's video and if you found this video helpful, make sure to leave a like and comment down below and for more videos like this, please consider subscribing.